Greenland is an island covered by an enormous ice cap, a 3,000 meter thick ice sheet, ending in steep cliffs and lodged between coastal mountains. This is the land of Nanook, the polar bear, the icy wind, and the Pitarak. Here, the outlet glaciers move down the slopes and flow into fjords. In Intokortamit, the most northerly village on the east coast, the 400 souls are making the most of the last rays of the polar sun, even though it's only five or six degrees outside. <laughs> I'm Vincent, and this is my friend Alban, a mountain guy and ice diving expert. As two adventurers, we have come to explore the submerged faces of icebergs, these gigantic blocks of ice carried inexorably along by currents from the Arctic Ocean. We don't really know what awaits us in this secret world, but we hope to discover some fabulous creatures. To do this, we intend to kayak between the only two communities on the entire east coast of Greenland, one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. A thousand kilometer long expedition through the ice with no human contact. End of August. This is when the ice melt reaches its peak. We know it's late in the season to be venturing here before the winter imprisons everything but it's also the ideal moment to get up close to drifting icebergs and dive under the ice. The countdown has begun. It's imperative we reach our destination before the end of October, or we'll be at the mercy of the storms, the newly forming sea ice, and the polar night. August 20th, we're ready to roll. This village may look peaceful, but the Great North has something of the Wild West about it. Preparations for this two-month expedition intrigue the local kids. What have we come in search of? Adventure with a capital A. Why are we setting out to be as carefree as these kids, to bask in freedom? With the kayak, me and my gear, it must be 300 kilos. Yeah, thereabouts. The maximum load, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> Not easy, huh? Are you going to get it all in? Yeah, no problem. We're gonna have to do this every day, huh? More like twice a day. Yeah, right. Hey, why don't we put some of these bullets in the rifle? Yeah. Maybe we should keep the others on the deck in the waterproof bag? There's room for five. Better be prepared. Oh, damn. I'm not getting anywhere. For now, with our bear gun in hand, we're heading south to Tasselak. And we're off. Hey, I'm beat. You want to stop? <laughs> That's the last chance, now or never. Let us stop or keep going. All right, I guess we can keep on going. All right, I'm coming with you. We'll be fine. Damn, a thousand kilometers. That's right, it's crazy. It's basically nothing between the two villages. From here on in, we're on our own. Apart from our satellite link to Gigi, Geraldine, our weather girl. This expedition is full of unknowns. Very few people travel this coast, so it's badly mapped. We work out our route on satellite maps, notably where to pitch camp among all the sheer cliffs awaiting us further south. This 
Sure we've got enough food? I don't know. But I've got all the food, so I'll be all right. You go off with the, all your diving gear. You'd better not abandon me, because you've got all the food and the toilet paper. <laughs> I've got the stove, the toilet paper, the food, the gas. Yeah, except that... The sleeping bags, the tent, so... Well, I, I've got the computer, and I, I could hook up to the net one day, maybe. Psh, come on. What are you going to do on the net? We have to cross the Scoresby Sund estuary. It's as massive as this fjord, the biggest in the world. 30 kilometers wide, 1,500 meters deep. This stretch of sea is the only route to Cape Brewster. Geraldine informs there's a 10-hour window of fine weather before the wind picks up. That gives us just enough time to get across without any mishaps. We set off at 2. It said it would take 9 hours. Yeah. But we left two hours ago, and it's still saying nine hours. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's gonna be long. The current's getting stronger. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to feel it. We've got sails for just this sort of situation. That means we can take advantage of a fair wind and counter the effect of an adverse current, or simply have a rest if the opportunity to go faster presents itself. Bye. See you later. You have to heal over a bit and be ready. Yeah. To let the sheets out if the wind picks up. Ah, uh, Alvin is way ahead of me, but I'm going to trim the sails and try to overtake him. The race is off. This is great, huh? Yeah, it's a race. I'm gonna catch you. Yeah. Sales are great but ours are definitely not made to withstand the force of the wind that's picked up all of a sudden. So, it's time to drop sails. We've been paddling for eight hours now, we're only halfway across the fjord, and still a long way from Cape Brewster. The wind rises, 25 knots, 30 knots. I don't like the look of the heavy swell that's forming. Our kayaks aren't made for being out so far at sea with waves like this in such cold water. What happened? When did you see me? When you were surfacing and the two boards were in the air. Did you hear me shout, Vince? Yeah, I'd seen you about five seconds before, and that was when I was uh, making my way back. All right, right. I felt really alone for a few seconds there. Uh, this is hell. It's starting to get really tough. After 16 hours paddling, we reach the south shore of Scoresby, exhausted and freezing, under the midnight sun. We have to test the gun. Did it get wet? Yeah, it's, it's soaked, drenched, waterlogged. We'll, uh, we'll have to give it a good clean tomorrow before we set off. Yeah, but if a teddy bear turns up tonight, will it work? 
I'm going to load it, and then we'll just have to pray it works. I don't know. What, what do you think? Who won't sleep so well? That's all. We can arm ourselves with stones. What time is it? 12.30. Okay. Yeah, 12.30, and I've had it. I'm beat. God, I thought we were never going to get here. Now we've got a bit of work to do before we leave tomorrow. Yeah, there are loads of things to dry. Mm-hmm. Because there are things that are supposed to be waterproof, but when you put them in the water, you realize that they aren't waterproof at all. <laughs> Surprising, huh? No. <laughs> things that are supposed to be unbreakable, break. <laughs> Unsinkable things sink. <laughs> it's a good thing it happened on the second day, I guess, rather yeah, yeah. than halfway through. At least we know the limits of our kayaks now. <laughs> I'm bushed. Can you manage in the dark? Yeah, no problem. Good night. Night. We decide to let our things dry at camp. It may not look like it, but it's three degrees Celsius. Less than a mile south of Cape Brewster, there are some huge icebergs. It's the perfect opportunity for a first dive. This coastline is famous for its many glaciers, from which these ice cathedrals have broken loose. Not bad, huh? It's awesome. Totally unreal. That iceberg is going to tip over soon. See how it's tilting? It's hard to figure out how big it is. It's 30 meters, maybe? 100 meters high? I have no idea. But diving, it's a bit risky. Diving under an iceberg is dangerous. It can flip over at any time. We pick a large tabular iceberg as it looks really solid. It must be three to 400 meters long, and to think that nine tenths of it is underwater. We set up a neat system allowing me to dive out at sea. The two kayaks are placed head to tail to form a kind of catamaran. It's hard to maneuver, but it's really handy. Okay, okay. that's fine too. You go here. Everything all right? Perfect. I don't like things being easy anyways. Well, if you're in the right place then. For sure. Spectacular though. It's really incredible. I'm gonna dive underneath it. It's awesome. The icy water whips my face and makes me gasp, even though I'm in a dry suit. My instruments say it's zero degrees Celsius. Anxiety is the first word that comes to mind. Sublime, the second. This never-ending wall makes me feel dizzy. Free fall. I glide along this giant indigo wall shaped by the sea into cupules as far as the eye can see. The wall is split by a crack of clear ice. It's as if I can see the iceberg's heart through this translucent window and feel it beating. The water is filled with microscopic particles, clouding visibility. After a tiny amphipod, life takes on the strangest forms in these icy waters. This tenophore's eight rows of bioluminescent cilia reflect and diffract the beams of my lights. One of the most amazing Arctic creatures of all is the sea angel, or sea butterfly. The small, legendary being seems to rule this world. 
Then, an arctic comb jelly, or sea nut, swims up. A tenophore whose filaments are filled with phytoplankton, unicellular organisms, and protists. It dives toward the abyss, from where the ethereal arctic jellyfish surges. A block has broken away. I hope Albin wasn't underneath it. I can see blocks drifting over there. You have to be really careful. This no warning sign. Plus, with the rebreather, there are no bubbles, so it's, it's hard to follow his movements. After 45 minutes underwater, the cold cuts straight through me. As I swim to the surface and see this block bobbing about in the water, I realize where the muffled sound I heard earlier came from. I was lucky. I feel tiny among all these floating chunks of ice. The ice is very thick, hundreds of thousands of tons calved off. That's why this adventure is so dangerous. I had a narrow escape this time. Wow, I heard a crack when I was underwater. I thought there was a problem with my bottle. Then I looked at the surface, but I couldn't see anything. W what did you see? I saw it crack over there. See that rounded section there? Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, wow, you have to be really aware. Yeah, for sure. It's better to dive in the morning like we're doing before it gets too warm. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's totally awesome down there. There were loads of jellyfish and sea angels and tenophores all over the place. It's hard to share such an experience, even with Vincent, just as it might be hard for him to explain the solitude he feels on the surface, the weight and the anxiety knowing he can do nothing if the iceberg collapses. As for me, I've discovered a whole new world under the icebergs, a vast, bewitching world. I can't wait to go back. continue south via the insides. These deep canyons between the fjords enable us to avoid the swell of the open sea. Kayaking is an extremely quiet and discreet way to travel, ideal for getting up close to animals. The Inuit call this channel Akilakita, the land on the other side of the fjord. In this world of stone, we are totally alone. Steam rises from the volcanic black basalt into the evening sky. Sulfurous water bubbles near the camp. We are very close to one of the world's few magma chambers, granite, Red and green oxides, copper, manganese, a landscape for gold diggers. It's really hot. It smells of sulfur. As if the Earth's blood were flowing through here. It's really cold tonight. What did they say the humidity level was? 95%. The temperature with the wind chill factor, one degree Celsius. It's uh, gonna freeze soon. What have you got to eat? Thai green curry with chicken and rice. Ooh, very sophisticated. It's really good. I had lasagna yesterday. Oh, it looked awful. Oh, yeah? Then I added hot water and saw all these little bits of carrots appear as if 
My grandma had made it. Because your grandma makes lasagna? No. Look, mine's really good. You've got zucchini and everything. Yeah, I never made stuff like this even at home. Well, enjoy. Tonight, I'm downloading via satellite phone the ice and wind charts, or GRIBS, which Geraldine sends us every day. It seems winter is setting in. The clock's ticking. What's the weather like? Ho oh, ho! Wonderful! Great! I think it snowed up there. Really? Yes, the, the, the top of the mountain's all white. Mm, so it is. It's definitely snow. Wasn't there yesterday. I thought the snow would come mid-September, not late August. Up there, even the polar bears have to shelter in their dens when the violent icy wind strikes all of a sudden. I'm putting on my big waterproof gloves today because my hands froze yesterday. End of August. After nine days, we've already traveled 230 kilometers south. We're getting into our stride. Day after day, the capes go by, and with them, the illustrious names of those who have explored this coast. Nansen, Jacobson, Erminger, and the Frenchmen, Blossville, Savary, Dossi. Most of them have never made it home. The landscape is nothing but ice and icebergs. The going becomes trickier. The wind is picking up. Dad, we'd better try to get out of here before it gets too compact and we get stuck. Those bear tracks? Ten meters from the tent. There are more bear tracks on the old snow. We still sit off in search of a meltwater stream to fill our jerry can. There are tracks. Here. Look. We're following the bear's trail. Yeah. We're going to come face to face with it, and we won't be laughing then. You'll see. Here, look. It's walking on the sand. It came back the other way. Yeah, it went the other way. Look, there are tracks there, and old ones above them, there. Oh, yeah. This is really handy. The streams haven't frozen yet. Yeah, it's great. I don't know how long it's going to last. You don't mess around with bears. They're fearsome hunters. And we're on their territory. They can smell us from miles away. The face of this glacier is at least 20 kilometers wide. 
This is where the ocean meets the vast ice cap covering the whole of Greenland. It's important to properly understand this interaction between the sea and the mountains. This is the land of the Katabatic wind, which the Inuit call the Pitarak. This icy wind blows at over 200 kilometers and even gets into the fjords. At the height of the summer, the meltwater acts like acid and eats away at the glacier from inside. This is where it's at. We're witnessing the birth of the icebergs, the clash of the titans. This colossus calves millions of tons of ice into the sea, which breaks into fragments known as brash ice. Look at that one. It's going to flip over in front of us, and then we'll be panicking. It doesn't look too happy. We head for a gully between Nansen and Jensen Fjords, drawn by the light and its sirens. At first glance, making our way through here looks impossible. With all this brash ice, I know deep down things will soon get much tougher. For now, it's as if everything is shifting. Our expedition takes on another dimension as we pass through this ice door. We get the feeling we're entering virgin territory at the one foot of the Earth's most ancient rocks, where no human has ever trod before. There are days when it's wet and windy, or cold and not motivated. But right now, we know exactly why we're here. Totally mysterious. I don't even know what time it is. I just want to savor this moment because it's so pretty, so quiet, so beautiful. We're definitely in another world now, another universe. Ten forty-seven. Ten forty-seven. See, there was a glacier there. The glacier is here. Uh, we're in the channel. It's crazy, huh? We made good progress. Fairly good progress, yes, but we lost a bit of time earlier in the fjord because of all that ice. Yeah, earlier, I thought. The weather was fine. And it's enthralling, basically. <laughs> enthralling's a lovely word. Enthralling? Yeah. That's to say, it's not a word I use often, but it's lovely. No, it's moving. It's still at the same time. I almost want to get trapped by the winter here, see? Yes. There were times, though, when I thought it had better not ice over. Do you think it'd be cool to dive here? Here? If it stays like this, with the light, it could be magical. Wow, what a setting. Beauty, huh? Yeah, not bad at all. For breakfast. You sleep well? Like a log. You said I'm cold in the night. No, that wasn't me. It was too. <laughs> There's only you and me. I'm gonna make a, oh, it's leaking. Ah, yeah, it's leaking a lot. Damn. What a drag. First thing in the morning. Do you think it means it's going to be a great day? We're going to have to be careful because it's moving quite a lot. I dive with a mechanical rebreather. It's much safer with this cold, but also trickier to use. Before diving, I carefully repeat every single move. Underwater, I constantly have to think about controlling my air and re-injecting pure oxygen. The slightest error, and I'll black out. Merci. 
Thanks. Could you guide me and tell me whether to go left or right? I, I can't see a thing. Straight ahead, that way. I thought the water in this fjord would be really clear, but the tide has changed the current. There are even adverse currents. I can feel the water moving in one direction, then the other as I swim along. Halocline is a phenomenon which occurs when fresh meltwater mixes with salt water. It's what creates this strange atmosphere, this artistic haze. It's kind of oppressive. I'm a little scared. I'd better not come across a polar bear in such shallow water. Surprisingly, there's no life down here. I head towards the middle of the channel where there's this big iceberg. As the current changes, the water becomes clearer and another tenophore appears, a Bolinopsis infundibulum. I dive deeper and decide to swim under the iceberg. Shimmering like metal, the ice seems very solid and compact. An arctic comb jelly suddenly appears in my headlight. It seems to be inviting me to follow it under the iceberg. I hesitate. The ice echoes, creaks, and cracks. This whole world is in motion. Apart from my heartbeat, it's all I can hear. I'm all alone in the world. We're both alone in our respective worlds. He's down there, I'm up here. And the next guy must be at least 500 kilometers away. <sighs> so yeah, Arben's underwater. He's alone too, we're both alone. Anyways, I hope he's enjoying himself. It's great fun up here. Fabulous atmosphere. I haven't started talking to the mountains yet, but I could end up doing so. Aren't you cold? Uh, a little, yeah. Especially my fingers. They're really cold. I felt really lonely up here. Really? Of course. Ice attracts ice with its eerie crackling sound. It's beautiful worrying about it at the same time. Winter has its gun trained on us. We're still in danger of getting stuck. We set off 17 days ago. The fog hasn't lifted and the channel is congested with ice. The current is moving every which way again turning the passage into a shifting maze. Surrounded by these veils of mist, I get the impression we're chasing chimeras. We're completely stuck. It's all compacted. Feels like there's no way out. We tried there, there. There, there. Unless we go back the way we came. There's no way out of there. All right, what do you want to do? Uh, let's turn back. Maybe we should try closer to the coast. It's hard to know where to go in such poor visibility. We can't see the ice-free areas in this gully. After several hours, I'm not even sure we can find our way back to where we started. Uh, 
The currents aren't moving in every direction there. Look. But it's moving so fast. You see a clear path, and then it closes immediately, and another one opens up. Look, do you see what's doing there? Yeah. It's, it's overlapping. It's not going in the same direction. It's a real maze. Yes. We're moving backwards, see? Yes. We're doing ten times the distance. I think we'd better step on it and get out of this channel. This channel, which seemed so pretty yesterday, has turned into a nightmare. And to crown it all, the fog is becoming really thick, and for now, in these conditions, we can't even think about finding a safe place to come ashore. We have to make headway no matter what, force our way through. It could take us hours to get out of here. It's one in the morning when we finally spot a beach emerging from the mist. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm dead. I've had enough. That's it. We've been paddling for 20 hours, haven't we? Yeah. It's been a long day. My fingers are frozen. I'm gonna boil some water straight away. My hands are fine today. Yeah. You only paddled for 20 hours. Look, they're beautiful tonight, see? What time is it? 1.40 in the morning. 1.40 in the morning? Yes. How the hell did it get to be 1.40? Shall I switch it off? Lights out. All right. Good night, then. Good night. Oh, every morning I wake up, I wonder where I am. For a split second, I'm like, oh, God, where am I? You're happy. You're in a tent with me. Yeah, that isn't the first thing I say to myself. <laughs> first thing I think is, oh, I'm in Greenland. How weird. I'm kayaking in the middle of nowhere. And my brain kicks into gear and I feel so distraught. Ah, oh, distraught. Nice word. Then I realize you're next to me, and that's it. <laughs> and you're overcome with joy. Yeah, I overcome with joy. It's funny being happy like this. Yeah, it's like an outburst of joy. Exactly. Genuine enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah. 23 days already and 380 kilometers covered. After the misadventures of the past few days, I suggest to Vincent we head out to get a closer look at the kilometers of icebergs drifting on the open sea, carried by the icy current flowing from the Arctic Ocean. 100 meter high icebergs. Surrounded by these giants, I search for words. Massive, monster, mammoth, monumental. The open sea is the perfect spot to explore the icebergs, and much better than the fjords. I'm delighted to see these luminous creatures again, which use their eight comb rows of cilia for locomotion. In fact, they owe their name, Tenophora, to this distinguishing feature. Tenophora comes from the Greek for comb-bearing. These jelly-like carnivores are hermaphrodites, ready to comb the area for some food. This tenophore has two viscous tentacles to which larvae of all kinds stick. I'd thought I'd never see anything more amazing than sea angels until this minuscule half-angel, half-devil creature suddenly appears. Reminiscent of Pokemon, it's like something out of a Japanese cartoon. Polar bear, one of the most fearsome predators on Earth. 
An electric shock goes down my spine, chills my blood. I hope Vince already has his finger on the trigger up there. He's an excellent swimmer, but a lousy diver, and only stays underwater for a few seconds. So I can keep him at a distance by going underwater. He must be wondering, what sort of weird animal am I? Friend or foe? The ludicrous idea suddenly occurs to me that he's probably eaten his fill. It takes me a while to understand that he's vulnerable in the water. I manage to calm down my breathing and get closer to him. Which of us is more afraid? He can't have come across divers very often. Who will he be able to tell about his strange encounter? In this incredible aquatic duet, he keeps an eye on my bubbles. I can tell that my presence is keeping him here, out of pure curiosity. I feel like a prisoner on death row with a last minute pardon. We're probably as stunned as each other. After this moment of grace, he disappears as proudly as he appeared. I don't know if you saw him. He, he put his head in the water. Yeah. Like he was looking at me. Uh-huh. It, it was totally awesome, I swear. Yeah, I saw. At one point, the two of you were really interacting. It has to be one of the most incredible experiences in my life. September 12th. We're almost halfway, and the going gets tougher. That was hairy, huh? Did you see my thing go sideways? I always get the damn breakers. <laughs> Same here. I ended up in the water. The rudder hit a rock and a wave carried me off. You fell in the water too? Yes. <laughs> what a great way to start the day. A nice little fright. Accidents happen fast. Yeah, we have to be ultra careful. I hope my kayak hasn't sprung a leak because of the impact. We're heading to a little island that doesn't have a name on the map. Distance is uh, 11 nautical miles. Right now, as we're making slow progress, it says 20 to 25 hours. That seems a bit long to me, and it's it's due southwest. It, it, it's more in that direction. 25 hours did seem long and kind of unlikely for just 20 kilometers. But we hadn't counted on the brash ice. The swell in the brash ice is quite something. No matter how much we try to go around it, it's still everywhere. It looks a hell of a mess up ahead, huh? Yes. We're going to have to slalom. There's ice on all sides. We've, 
no choice but to go through it. Listen, let's try to stay on course. I think we should go around it. Uh, head further out to sea to avoid all these uh, ice cubes. We could go that way, to the left of that iceberg. Yeah, it might be better. And then head out to sea. Yeah. Okay. Alvin's coming. Maybe it's time for a break. You all right? The closest shore, there, is still 10 kilometers away. Yeah. So if we have a major problem, we won't be able to swim to shore. Are you all right? I have to check. I've been taking on water. I think since the collision this morning. Really? You mean you're sinking? I get the feeling the kayak's taking on water. Yeah, well, you better check. How about we head for a beach? I guess we've got to decide whether we use the resin for this small hole or keep it for something more serious. Because this is manageable, I can bail every two hours. Yeah? It's a stopgap solution, but maybe we should keep the resin we have in case we get a bigger hole. Ah, beautiful Greenland and its fine sandy beaches. What a disaster. Oh, God. The brash ice is very dense up ahead. We're going to have to reach the shore eventually to set up camp. Sleeping out at sea really isn't an option. Things aren't looking good, though. I haven't said anything to Albin yet, but with my kayak full of icy water, I'm losing the feeling in my feet. We're not getting anywhere. Oh, I'm dead beat. The problem is I'm uh, losing feeling in my feet. I can still feel one of them when I pushed out on the pedal, but I can tell they're starting to go numb. So I guess we should stop real soon and get warm. If we don't, we're going to end up getting hypothermia when the sun goes down, and if we haven't eaten. I suggest we paddle along the ice toward there. Yeah, it's sweet of you to suggest something, but it's the only solution anyways. Hang on. Come on, don't despair, don't despair. Hey, hang on. If I'd listened to you, we'd have paddled for five hours. No way, I, huh? I'm messing with you. Messing with you, playing the devil's advocate, that's all. Yeah, well, I'm out of here. If you love me, follow me. You'll thank me later anyways. Yeah? You're right, yeah. Uh, see you then. I'd be happy to camp there, but you don't want to. No way, I like camping on an iceberg. Camp on an iceberg? And why not sleep in our kayaks while we're at it? The sun is starting to go down. Can't land here. Damn, this is getting really tough. It's a trap. What? This is a real trap. We're trapped like rats. Turning back is impossible. We're completely stuck. 
We're going to have to sleep here. Oh, we need to eat fast. I'm freezing. Let's boil some water. We'll spend the night here as soon as the ice clears or... Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. We'll let you know tomorrow if we're still alive, that is. Uh, uh, hold on to it, it'll fall in the water. No! Damn it! I've no idea which way we're drifting. We'll see at daybreak tomorrow. I've no idea which way we're drifting. We'll see at daybreak tomorrow. We'll spend the night here, as soon as the ice clears, or... Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. We'll let you know tomorrow if we're still alive, that is. Right. Well, maybe see you tomorrow. I haven't a clue what time it is, but we're still surrounded by brash ice. Alban is hiding in his survival blanket. Ugh. I'm freezing. We're still stuck, basically. I think we should start paddling to warm ourselves up. The water isn't very far away. If we manage to get out of here, we can... Go ashore somewhere or other. Let's beat it. Yeah, there's no point going that way. No, hey, open water, huh? Now all we need is a storm. There's only one way to get out of here, and that's to get in the water and free our kayaks. It's 7.30 a.m. Trying to put my suit on in the kayak because basically we're trapped by the ice. Ah. This is pretty damn tough. For sure. God, it's gonna feel good to be back in open water. Ah, jeez, it's frozen. Will you be okay? Yay, it works. What a guy. He's gone to get the other kayak. It's hard work, but it does work. We're maybe a third of the way to the ice-free zone up ahead of us. Still very far. Maybe a, a fifth of the way, or maybe a tenth. Come on, buddy! Great! Yes, ice-free water. Awesome. We're gonna be able to move at last. God damn it. What a hassle. I won't forget this anytime soon. Uh, I'm beat. Uh. Oh.
We're dead on our feet. I can't feel my toes or my fingers anymore. We almost died. A few hours more, and we'd have gotten hypothermia, the big sleep. We could easily get trapped and never make it out of here alive, seeing how much ice there is. What do you think? We've been in our kayaks for almost 36 hours now. We, we have to stop. We'll see about that later. It's a deal. We'll stop here. Come on, then. Let's set up camp. Vincent is exhausted, and as if we didn't have enough problems, we have to smash up the ice so the tide doesn't carry the kayaks out to sea. One, two, three. Do you want me to climb up there, too? No, push it from the back. It's long. Four hours freezing in the pitch dark, wondering if we'll ever see another sunrise. I paddled all day thinking about this moment. Oh, the long-awaited moment. I'm staying put now. Oh. A night like that does wonders. Yeah, right. God, it does feel good. Yeah. I don't want to get up. Oh, me either. Oh, I'm tired. Makeshift repair. If it slows down the leak, it'd be good. I'm sick of bailing out water every hour. My feet are in the water, my ass is in the water. We'll see if, see if that works. Things are getting seriously complicated. We're still a long way from Tassilac. Winter is setting in. Alvin hasn't said anything, but our night spent in the brash ice was a pretty traumatic experience. We're not as carefree as when we set off this morning. You coming? I just have to get out of all this ice and I'll be on my way. Why am I stuck now? Sick of this. What's the problem? Ah. Oh, that's terrible. You've got nothing on the back now. Nope. Can we change it in the water or do we need to go ashore? Let's try and change it in the water. Okay. Right. I'm so bummed out. I got squashed between the two icebergs and thrown. I heard this loud, uh, crack. Yeah? Uh, that's it. I've done it. It's okay. Wow. La, 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 la. See? See? And you only wanted to take one. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. I, I have confidence in Vince. To think we should already be in the Bahamas by now. This is crazy. How many kilometers have we done today? 450 meters. <laughs> we set out 90 minutes ago. Oh, that's not good. Don't moan. Look, the sun's coming out. Great. Yeah, there are two or three bits of elastic. If I remove the axle, it should be okay. I'll take out the pin. All right, the axle and the rudder. There we go. Great. Hand me the new one. Uh, the bolt is too small for the axle. Are you doing this on purpose? You've got to be kidding. <laughs> it isn't the right diameter. Damn, it could have been so easy. But no, the, the hole is too small. Yeah, we're good otherwise, though, huh? Can you test it to see? Is it working? 
Ha, nice. You are so smart, Vince. You're my hero. Come on, let's go. Thanks a lot. What a relief. We've covered 620 kilometers since we set off a month ago. We should have already been hit by the September storms. I can't get over this anticyclone. Our little problems are soon forgotten as we make good headway in this fabulous setting. We can feel the power of nature here, and we're really lucky the conditions are so favorable. If it wasn't for them, I don't think we've ever gotten this far. See how clear the water is? It's incredible, huh? Under the icebergs, I had visibility of about 20 to 30 meters. It was amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, wow. I feel like I'm gliding over an ocean of emptiness. It makes me feel dizzy. The current has carved these lines, shaped the ice, sculpted these bas-reliefs. With the cold and the winter, all life has disappeared, except for this tiny pteropod. Where has it taken refuge? These icy structures have been carved into delicate, contoured canyons, just as the wind makes its mark on the desert sand. I'd like to think this iceberg is releasing bubbles from another age, air trapped in the ice millions of years ago. I feel like I've been swallowed up by a whale. I savor these ephemeral forms, this unique dive. At the same cardinal point, no one could ever imagine this remarkable scenery. Right. What's your verdict? We're stuck. I guess we should think about it for a couple of minutes, but, um... It's full of ice. We've done, what, 10 kilometers along this channel? Only to meet a dead end. I'm sure the way out isn't very far away. We could always try going ashore, climb a bit, and see how the land lies. Yeah, just there, behind us. Or turn back. Yes. Because there's no way to get through here. One, two, three. Come on, that's it. We better be careful, because we, we might fall. There's a bit of open water over there, but it's hard to see. And what lies beyond it? Yeah, maybe we get through if we went along the coast, but it's hard to figure out. It's, it's far. How many kilometers are we from the end? I think we're here. Yes. This section here between the two, which isn't very high, must be that bit we can see. That's the cape that we can see over there. Uh, right just there. It isn't that far. We're only a kilometer from the exit. Yeah, it's worth trying to get through. Otherwise, we'll have to turn back, go around via the open sea. That's an extra 30 kilometers. And right now, we're only one kilometer from the exit. We've been paddling due south for 36 days and have covered 720 kilometers. But we're up against a serious dilemma. On one side, there are the fjords where the sea ice is forming. And on the other, the heavy swell of the open sea and its increasingly compact brash ice, in which it's pretty much impossible to make any headway. Want to sleep around here? 
I'm happy to stay here. Winter is definitely on its way. There's a telltale sign that the meltwater streams have frozen. From now on, we're going to have to melt the ice to get water. It's weird, we can't see ourselves, but if I look like you, it's scary. <laughs> Do I look like you? I don't know if you look like me because I don't know what I look like. Oh, you don't say. I know what you look like, but I don't know what I look like. That's for sure. It's hard to say what you look like. Tonight, the gribs and weather forecasts aren't very encouraging. An email from Geraldine informs us a 35 to 40 knot wind will hit us in 24 hours. What's more, the way out of the fjord is completely frozen. It's freezing, absolutely freezing. Yeah, the entire bay is frozen over. It's minus 17 this morning. I decide to dive. The sea ice is getting seriously thick. Winter is well and truly here. Once under the surface, a whole new world opens up to me. Under this frozen sea, which is only three or four centimeters thick, the spectacle isn't down below anymore. It's up in the sky. With confinement, I feel claustrophobic. The ice is still thin, so I should be able to find my way out at any time. I'll check, though, just in case. Wow. It's, it's amazing. Is it beautiful? It's the start of the Arctic winter, so it's great. It's really great. I can hear a clicking noise all around me. It's the sound of the ice crystallizing. A gently sloping iceberg forms flat beneath me. My air bubbles are flattened like a liquid clock under the surface. I can feel time passing, flowing through my veins. It's like diving in a cave despite the light penetrating the surface. Dead end. Then I perceive something startling, associated with birth. Between muffled anxiety and heightened awareness of the self, like a vital stridency in such a confined place. The cold has frozen everything. Winter is the season when everything dies. The ice on the surface gets thicker. The water grows heavier by forming flakes, and I don't venture any further for fear of not being able to resurface. The strong winds will hit in 12 hours. We decide to pass Gustav Holm Cape on the edge of the Arctic Circle while it is still possible. The tide has broken the newly formed sea ice and brought brash ice with it. The chunks are starting to freeze together, but still not enough for us to walk on them. Vince, I need to talk to you. We're trying to get out of here to reach the other cape, right? To get to the other bay? This afternoon, as you know, they're forecasting wind. Yes. They're forecasting a lot of wind. It's vital we protect ourselves, and we're not making any headway right now. I suggest we go back to where we were. Uh, we've been paddling for three hours. That means another three hours in the ice. The wind is picking up. All I know is the swell is rising, and we're up shit creek. I'm trying to resign myself to it, but it's a pain. Pain in the ass. It's better than dying. Look, it's heading this way. Come on, let's let's get out of here. God damn it! Up. 
I don't want to get stuck here. Yes, yes, yes. See, it just broke. Ten seconds after I went by. All right. Back to square one. The fjord is definitely much more frozen than it was. It's changing every day. When we entered two days ago, the water was free of ice. Yesterday, we only just made it through, and today, there's absolutely no way. It's 15 kilometers by kayak. Yeah. And if we go on foot, it's just on the other side. I'd, I'd be into lugging our gear over there. That way, we won't have wasted the day. See? Yeah. It'll warm up, too. Yeah, it's a huge task. We can just take our time. We can always do the last stretch tomorrow. We've got much less food now, but we still have to carry some 300 kilos for two kilometers over this pass. We hope to find a less frozen and more sheltered area behind it so we can continue on our way, instead of exhausting ourselves tackling impassable barriers of ice and risking smashing up the kayaks. One, two, three. <sighs> it takes six hours and five return trips to get everything over the pass. As forecast, the wind is getting stronger. Completely free of ice, this small cove down below even seems to be perfectly protected. And to think I didn't want to come here. We've reached our destination. God, it feels good. The strong wind Geraldine forecast has hit. Yeah, it's a good thing we headed back and we're not at sea. For sure. We'll let it blow over. At least we passed the Cape. We passed it by land, but we still passed it. It's taken a beating. The fiberglass is exposed. Yeah, we can't paddle like this. We'll have to cut out this whole section. It's really fragile now. If you look closely, there are small holes everywhere. There, and there. Nah. It's taking in water here. So there's the front and tons of other places that need repairing, basically. Uh, right, I'll stick it on. It might save our lives. We're gonna continue. It works. With a wind of over 30 knots, we know kayaking is not an option. It would be suicidal in these waters with all this ice. We need a more precise forecast. Hello? Hi, Geraldine. It's us. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. And you? Fine. We were wondering what the weather forecast was. Do you, do you have it in front of you? It isn't very encouraging. The wind's going to be blowing all week. A head-on wind. You're in the middle of an area of low pressure, basically. Okay. There'll be rain till Friday, and on the ice chart, sea ice is forming around you. It's not looking very good. That's, uh, that's not very encouraging at all. You'd better find somewhere to hunker down and stay safe because uh, you won't be able to make any headway. It's going to be tough. You have to put your safety first. T 
take care of yourself. Try and um, try and send us the grib if, if you can, so we can check out what you've just told us. Yes. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You take care. Don't mention it. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. The grib is categorical. We are in the middle of a force six to seven gale. We have to stay put in our tiny tent till the weather improves. The conditions are gonna be worse in a week's time. Geraldine says the sea ice is starting to form and we can see the channels are freezing. Uh, at this rate, we won't get to Tassilac till Christmas. Yeah, yeah, but we will have run out of food by Christmas. And everything's frozen, it's dark, it's cold, and the kayaks are like sieves. This was a real blow. Even so, Vincent makes everything seem brighter. My dear album, we may be in deepest Greenland, but I wanted to celebrate fittingly your 35th birthday. <laughs> no. With a few little treats to complement our freeze-dried meal, we have a little magic box. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And some alcohol so we can get drunk. Ah, <laughs> now, now you're thinking. In moderation. Wow, oh, you had all that in your kayak. That's right, I had to bring them. Oh, foie gras. Oh, it's fabulous. I, I'm, I'm so happy. Thank you, I'm, I'm a very lucky guy. How about a little aperitif then, huh? Anyway, we don't give a damn tonight. We're not driving. <laughs> this is great. Right. Let's clink glasses. Thanks a million, Vincent. <laughs> a serial killer's holiday. Oh, great. Nadine Monfils. And there's a little inscription inside. Enjoy every moment. And I, I think at the end it says... Big bugs. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Big bugs. <laughs> I think. Enjoy every moment. Big bugs. Maria Street. <laughs> Enjoy every moment. Big bugs. <laughs> Big tugs. <laughs> Big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think she still messed up the first letter. Right? It's big, right? No? <laughs> it still doesn't say big hugs. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I'm feeling better already. It's great. God, what crappy weather. We're definitely not improving our average. If it were just raining, we'd be able to set off again, but uh, there, there's the wind and the waves too. So we can't even put the kayaks in the water. They'd get flipped over by the undertow. We're gonna make it to Tassilac. Not tonight, though. For sure. Right, Alvin. This is our third day of waiting in the rain and the tent. How are you keeping busy? Actually, I found a great thing. It's just to pass the time, though. I didn't like our breakfast that much. It was really disgusting. The only thing I like in it is the little chocolate chips. And they're really tiny. Picking them out isn't easy. And then, in another bag, I've got a supply of chocolate to boost my morale. I admit what I'm doing is totally dumb, but... Whatever. It should have stopped raining a, a day ago. But it hasn't. It's, uh, it's still raining just as heavy. Uh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> the end of the storm and this deafening silence bring the Dharma bums out of our torpor. 
First the moon, it's a good omen. Then the aurora borealis appears. The spirits are with us. It's going to be fine and cold. It's beautiful, huh? Really wonderful. We'll be able to leave now. My gloves are frozen. We can't wait to hit the road and make up the lost time. There are still some 200 kilometers to cover. If all goes well, we should arrive in about 10 days. The weather is on our side now. Despite the biting cold, some channels are still free of ice thanks to the currents. Tomorrow, the same spot could be completely frozen. We'll give it all we got, blazing a trail till we're beat. Tonight, before winter ices over this magical place, I decide to go for one last dive. Do you have any tea left? Can I, can I steal some? I've run out. Go ahead. Help yourself. Do you feel up to diving? Yes, but I, I think I need to warm up a little first. But I'm ultra motivated to see what night diving is like. Right. I'll keep an eye on you. Seeing this aurora filling the entire sky, I understand why the Inuit revere such phenomena. The people of this coast think they are the souls of stillborn children, the chant of the heavens. For us, it's a solar storm, a shower of magnetic particles vanishing in the atmosphere. Must be minus 20 out when I plunge under the sea ice. If by day there has been no life around for some time, the mere fact of diving under the water with powerful lights soon attracts a large Arctic jellyfish, Cyanea capillata. The lion's mane jellyfish might not roar, but its sting can affect your breathing and cause serious heart problems. If only Vincent could see this, he'd be enthralled by such beauty. The water is minus one Celsius and filled with zooplankton. A new tenophore appears, an ectoplasmic phantom going by the funny name of Bolinopsis infundibulum. It looks like two twin beings, mirror image Siamese, entwined in a dance of mortal combat. Then an Arctic cod, or Arctogaddis glacialis appears, and this bizarre microscopic squid There are more surprises in store. A siphonophore at least two meters long. It's a colony of jellyfish in which each animal has a specific function, floating, swimming, eating, digesting, reproducing, and protecting. Thousands of individuals forming a single organism. As I float downward, a frightening figure surges up from the depths. My heart skips a beat. 
So here it is, the Greenland shark, Guri shark or sleeper shark, Somniosis microcephalus, a gray-skinned monster straight out of prehistoric times. This deep water shark occasionally comes up at night to hunt or grab carrion trapped near the surface. Little is known about this shark apart from the fact it grows a half a centimeter to one centimeter a year. This specimen could be two to three hundred years old, which would make it the vertebrate with the longest lifespan in the world. This moving ton of flesh, this monolith with an icy stare, circles me. Swak is associated with the creation myth and the goddess Sedna, mother of the sea. In Inuit cosmogony, it is the goddess's urine. This shark really does have a high urea content. It's even toxic. Those who find it in their nets know they could be severely poisoned if they ate it. Even dogs that have been fed this flesh by their masters go blind and stagger about as if drunk until they die. We're a few days away from our destination. In the white day, we can't even make out the shore. The slush is slowing us down considerably. A risky idea comes to me, but there's no other way of working out our route through this maze. How about going up to the top of that iceberg? We won't hang around, though, in case it cracks or flips over. Oh. Hey, it's a goddamn shambles. There's ice everywhere, man. Yeah, too right, too right. Plus, it's... It's really hard because we can't tell the difference between the water and the ice that's forming. Everything that's gray is ice, isn't even water anymore. There are big, big sheets of it. We're gonna have to go around it. Can you get through? Is it thick? Yeah, it's thick. I could try walking on it, but I'm, I'm not sure it'll hold. No. This is thick, though. We can walk on it. Some parts are thicker than others. Okay, easy, easy. Hang on. Are you okay? Why don't you try over there? You all right? Yeah, it isn't solid enough. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Lost my boot. 
Huh? I've lost my boot. Got anything to eat? Yeah, cereal bar. It's lucky we're lighter now near the end of the journey because we'd never have been able to do that at the beginning. No, we'd never have made it, that's for sure. It's a damn pain about my boot. How do you lose a boot? What, what the hell happened? I, what did you do? The first time I fell, I don't know what happened, but when I got up, I was missing my boot. You have to be extra careful on the ice. For sure. You're in the water all the time. It's a pain in the ass about your boot. It sucks. You know, you better not stay in here too long. It's freezing. See? It's getting cold fast. Yeah, that's for sure. God damn it. We're blocked. There's 50 meters of ice before it opens. Go walk on it then. I'm sick of falling in the water. You know what? Lie down. It's better when you lie down. Damn, it isn't holding. Do you want a hand? Yeah, help me. We're not there yet. The end is in sight. Every meter takes it out of us. The sea ice isn't solid enough, and we have to make superhuman efforts to cover these last 50 kilometers. We're fighting all the way through. Night is falling earlier and earlier, but our spirits are high. We're almost there. I don't see how Tasselak can escape us now. Ah, uh, I'm happy we found this spot. Me too. Man, I never thought today it was going to end. It's long, huh? God, I look awful. <laughs> Just look at me. What about me? Look at me. Uh, hang on, hang on. Can't see myself anymore. Uh, hold the mirror still. I need to do my face for our arrival. Ah, not bad. I look pretty sexy now. Apart from the smell. Should be okay. Yeah, we need to talk, Vince. You don't think I'm sexy? No, sure, of course you're sexy, but you haven't taken care of yourself for weeks. You see what I'm getting at? Well, have you seen your face? No, no, I haven't seen it, actually. And I don't think I want to, either. I, I get the impression this is kind of bushy. When I do this, I get the feeling I look like Asterix, which isn't great. I don't know which of us reeks the most. You do. Well, I think it's you. Funny, huh? 
Good night, buddy. Don't make too much noise, okay? Okay. Sleep well. Tell me if the TV's too loud. Mm-hmm. One hell of a journey we've done, huh? No? So I'm alone? I guess he's asleep. Okay. Wow, it snowed a lot in the night. There's quite a thick layer already, huh? Look at this. Okay. All right. Oh my god. It's going to be a tough day. There are 30 kilometers to go. We feared the Pitarak more than anything. But we had reckoned on the Nagaya, the terrible northeast wind. All right. Even so, we have to move out. We can't get stuck here in the ice trap with just 24 hours to go. Let's clear all this first and then deal with the tent. Okay. It could mean dying a few kilometers from our goal, like others have died in Arctic snowstorms just 10 minutes walk from their tents. Okay, we can put it down. It's lined up okay. Maybe that way. It looks better. Right. Well, let's get going before it gets too cold. Should we try to move forward? Minus 10 and I'm sweating. We're gonna be freezing soon. We're not gonna make it. Another 10 meters. This is the final battle, the last effort for our aching muscles. The wind dies down, the path becomes clearer. Unconsciously, we slow down to savor the thousand kilometers covered. Today, the 51st day of our journey, we enter Amasalik Fjord, where Tasselak lies. We paddle reluctantly to the finish. Beautiful. What a fabulous day to arrive. With all this snow, it's stunning. Yeah, after all we've been through, it's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. Want to stop here or continue south? No, I, I could take a break. We could kayak around the world. <laughs> Let's stop for a second. We're so close now. This is it, we've done it. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm, uh... <sighs> wow. Wow. <laughs> we did it, man. Hey. <laughs> On reaching our goal, I realize we're far removed from the reality of the Inuit, this courageous people. Greenland isn't celebrating us as heroes. It has let us explore the heart of its secrets and kept us from harm. 
We couldn't have dreamt of a better gift. <laughs>